Hi everyone, so this is the first Midflower Lesson 3, or potentially it's actually Lesson 2 if you plan the first two together. And it's talking about the binomial distribution. And you've already come across it when we've done binomial expansions. Um, so let's have a look at this one then. So it says, let the number of sixes when the fair dice is rolled three times. Right. So x is zero means I don't get a six three times. So it's like the probability of not a six, not a six, not a six. So that's going to be not a six is five, six, five, six, five, six. Or if I wanted to, oops, can I get that? I can do it as 5, 6, all cubed. But then that matches the first term of a binomial expansion. So 5 over 6, all cubed. So that's 1, 2, 5 over 2, 16. Now then, the probability that x is 1, so that means I get 1, 6. So I've got two not 6s and a 6. But if you think about it, I can have not a 6, not a 6, 6. I can have not a 6, 6, not a 6. I can have a 6, not a 6, not a 6. So I have three different ways of doing that times by 3. Randomly, that is 3, C, 1. So what I've got here is a 3, which has come from a 3, C, 1. I've got 5 over 6 happening twice, so it's squared. And then a 1 over 6 happening once. And you can see if that was a 3C1, how binomial that actually looks. So for 2, so x is 2 is 2 sixes. So if you think about it, for 2 sixes, you can have 6, 6, not a 6, 6, not a 6, 6, or not a 6, 6, 6, three different ways. But really, it's 3C2. Uh, not a 6 was twice, uh, once. And getting a six is twice. So it follows a binomial expansion. I didn't put answers for these, did I? Never mind. Uh, so that was 75 over 216. And this is 15 over 216. So you can kind of see that they actually follow a binomial expansion when we're doing them. And then the last one for all sixes. So a six, a six, and a six would be like just the, the end term. So it'd be 1 over 6 raised to the power 3. Because you've got a 6 and then a 6 and then a 6. So 1 over 2, 16. There. That's easy enough and quite nice if it links in with binomial expansion. Um, so x is the number of 6. So now, because binomial is two things, it's success or failure. I got the 6, I didn't get the 6. There is no grey area. It's either a success, which is getting the 6, or a failure, which is not getting the 6. And the probabilities add up to 1. So, so we kind of talk about that mentioning there about the, the binomial. So that bit there says that x, the tilde bit means follows, the b means binomial distribution. The three is the three trials, and the one sixth is a probability of success of a sixth. So that's what that means. If I did it twenty times, it'd be a twenty instead of a three. So it says a fair dice is thrown 10 times, so n is 10, find the probability of getting two sixes. So, so it says here, let x be the number of sixes when a fair dice is thrown 10 times, and it gives me the distribution there. I throw it 10 times, and a fair dice, getting a six is one sixth. So 10c2 is the number of ways of getting the two sixes from the 10. Can you imagine that? 6, 6, and then 8 non 6s, or a 6, a non 6, a 6, and 7 non 6s, and you're kind of working its way through. And then they have the first 6 following it through as well. So there's quite a few different ways there of doing it. Um, so it kind of links in quite nicely. So, so it 
says, example three, so a fair dice is thrown seven times, so n is seven. Fair, so I'll find the probability of getting exactly three sixes. So the probability of success is one six. So if we do it properly, we should write down let x equal the number of sixes. So I'll let x equal the number of sixes. And then we have x follows, so we've got tilde, b for binomial, a is 7, success is a 6. And I want the probability that x is equal to 3. So that will be 7c3, the number of ways of getting 3 sixes, times by, so we'll think about it, um, so it's 3 sixes and not 3, so it's 3 sixes and 4 not sixes. So I can have a 5 over 6 to the power 4 times by a 1 over 6 cube. And that definitely follows the NCR for the for your finger. Uh, for my over expansions. That's 0 0.0781. And there's one for you. Now when they've done this one, they've kind of just they've written the, the success and the failure the other way around, but it doesn't really matter. So we've got a fair tetrahedral dice from five times, so A is five, success is a quarter, what, exactly two fours, so it's five C2, I'm getting two fours out on five sides. There's my two fours, so that's my success, that's my failure. I wrote it the other way around, that's my failure first. And that's my success because that follows the binomial expansion formula perfectly. Whereas that, it's like 3 times 4 is 4 times 3. That's all. Same idea. So a fair three sided spinner, we spun 12 times, so that is 12. Find the probability of getting exactly A 5 times. So we're assuming if it's fair, the probability is a third. So we should say let x equal the number of a's you get. Let x equal the number of a's. And then x follow the binomial of 12 comma a third. I want the probability that x is equal to 5. So it's 12 c 5. I'm going to do it as failure first. So if I succeed 5 times, I fail 7 times. So that's two thirds to the power seven, and then one third to the power five. It doesn't matter, this can be, you know, as long as you get the power right, it doesn't really matter. They've done it the other way around, they've done success and failure, but that properly matches the, the binomial formula. So that's 0 0.191. Then there's one for you. There's two ones for you here. Let's have a look at them. Make sure you do these, you're going to get lazy with the old questions. You know. So they're for practice. There. <coughs> okay. Point. Right, so it says, so the number of successes of any independent trials, each having the same probability, so there's your kind of problem. They've done success first. And then fail the second. It doesn't matter. 3 times 4 is 4 times 3. We don't care. Uh, shall I do this example 5 or this example 6 in a separate bit? Yeah, why not? Okay. Oh, well.